Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Liz. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. to open up to Psalm 100. It's a song, S-O-N-G, but it also, it's also a psalm, S-A-L-M. So she's going to read that. And if you have your Bibles at home, you can open it up because it will bless you. Because we're going to open up our Bibles with the Word of God to praise Him in Psalm 100, Sister Audrey. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good. Hallelujah. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures for all. Thank you, Sister Audrey, for that song encouraging us to all make a joyful noise of the Lord to serve him with gladness. Hallelujah. No matter what we see with these natural eyes, God has given us spiritual eyes to see. Hallelujah. To see what's going on in the spiritual. To let you know that it's already done. Hallelujah. Your blessings have already been placed, God. He's placed it in your heart. He's placed it in your mind. He's placed it in your spirit. No matter what we see with the natural eyes, God said to, he's made us glad that for those who love him, for those who love him and are the cold, all things work together for our good and his glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready, Zoom family? Unmute so we can praise the Lord, so we can thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Just think about it. Even if you can't remember, even if you've lost your memory, just think about what has already been done and what he's doing. Thank you for your sovereignty, oh God. Hallelujah, the one true God. Hallelujah, the faithful God. Enter into your presence with thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, we're thankful, God, that you are faithful, that you are just, that 
that you are pure, that you are loving, that you are holy, 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 holy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Adonai. You are our Lord. You are our master. There is none like you. There is none like you, God. You said whatever you did and worry and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give the thanks to the God, the Father, through him. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Send up your praises to the Lord. If you're on Facebook, go ahead. Hallelujah. In the comment section, just start praising him. If he's given you the gift to write, just praise him. Let him know how much you love him. Hallelujah. Let the world know how much you love him, how you appreciate him, how there's none like him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, saints. Thank you, Zoom family. Thank you, Zoom family. You can go ahead and mute your, your devices now. Hallelujah. You know what? As we're entering into the throne room of God, we're entering into the throne room on earth as it is done already in heaven. Amen. Amen. I want to share something with you today. I want to share Revelation chapter 4 verses 8 to 11. What is, what's going on in the throne room right now? On earth, we're going to be worshiping a holy, holy. We are worshiping. We are worshiping a holy, holy, holy God. So oh, if you get your Bibles open, Revelation 4, 8 through 11, this is what it says. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for blessing John to take a peek into the throne room and share it with us so we know what's going on in the throne room of God. It says in verse 8, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And you know what? This is their job. This is their duty. All 24, 24, 24, 7. They don't rest. They do not rest day or night. Day or night. Seeing holy. Holy, holy. That's probably the only place in the word that you'll see three times. You don't see love, 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 or just, 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 or faithful, faithful, faithful. But here we see holy, holy, holy. Three times. Hallelujah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Lord God Almighty. We're talking about the Father, El Shaddai, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, hallelujah, who lives forever and ever, guess what happens? The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship and worship and worship him. That's what we're doing right now and worship him who lives forever and ever. And you know what else? They cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, O oh Lord, just to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will, they exist and were created. Unmute. Unmute and say, you are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will, they exist and were, and were exist created. You are worthy. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we begin to mute, as we begin to mute our devices, for those of you on Zoom, but that doesn't mean you to for you to be silent. That means for you to turn off the, those uh, those those devices.
Because the, in the spirit and with our voices and with our gestures, holy, holy, holy God, we're going to minister this song, but it's going to take on a whole different meaning because you read that's what's going on. That's what's going on in the heavenlies. That's what's going on in the heavenlies. They're saying, holy, holy, holy God. Our Father who art in heaven, holy, holy, holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That's what we're doing as it is in heaven. Sister Liz is going to put up the lyrics and we're going to worship this song. creates, who commands, who defends, who destroys sin, who's forgiving, who's redeeming. That's what we're going to romance right now.
Tears of joy, tears of gratitude, Lord, for you. Yes. That you carry us, Lord, in times of trouble and times of trial. Thank you. We praise you today, Lord, for all you do. We thank you, Lord, not just for ourselves, but for our families. Lord, we lift up the people of Ukraine to you today. Right now, Lord, right now. Knowing, Lord, you have already provided an answer. Knowing that you've already made a way. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty in everything, Lord. We lift up the prayers to, for all those, Lord, who are perishing, all those who are going through trial. No matter what the trial might be, Lord, for those on the front lines. Yes. But Lord, there's a war going on all over. Yes. There's a war going on in our homes. There's a war going on <laughs> in America. There's a war going on in South Africa. Lord, there's warfare all over because we're fighting a spiritual yes. battle, Lord. So we look to you in all these things, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. That we won't fear, we won't back up, Lord. That we'll band yes. together. Yes. And we'll let your will do what it will, Lord, and we just yes, thank, you. thank you right now, Lord. I lift up the church to you. I lift up all those who are going through trials, Lord, all those in marriages, Lord, in their spouses. I ask you to carry them, Lord, all those who are sick and ill of the body. I lift up Sister Audrey today, Lord. I ask you to bless her, Lord. Cure, her, Lord, from her sickness, from whatever is ailing her and others, Lord. Sister Jeanette. Sister Jackie, Sister Patricia, Sister Yolanda, Lord, for continued healing in all of them, Lord, all these beautiful people. Lord, I lift up those with COVID, those who have lost loved ones, those that are going through separation, loss of people, Lord, who are no longer sitting at the table with them, those who are, are gone now, Lord. I lift up the elderly, our elderly people, Lord, who have no one to care for them, Lord. I lift up all those who are being abused, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to carry them. Those who are homeless and on the streets. Lord, so many, so many. But we just thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign and all-powerful and all-knowing. And Lord, you don't miss a beat. We can come to you with our prayers and expectation, knowing that you made a way. So I thank you again, Lord, and I thank you for being with us today. We ask you to be with us always, Lord, to carry us through whatever may come. Lord, we may not like it, we may not even want it, but we'll go through it as long as you're with us, amen? So we thank you, Lord, and we ask you to be with us today and always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Amen. Amen. Praise God, saints. Praise God. Hello, hello, hello. Praise Thank you all for being here. Amen. Praise God. Good to see y'all. Amen. 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 You know, I don't get a chance to come out here and, and lead the worship, Pastor. And Lisa does that. We have to wait till we get back in the church room where we can all get on down and worship like we want to. But uh, sometimes the Lord does something when I'm sitting over there at that piano and I couldn't contain myself. So I thank you all for, uh, the Lord. for uh, sharing in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for being here today. And uh, as we revel in his word, amen, that's what this is about. We get to, to go before the Lord and, and get to be nourished get to uh, allow him to uh, strengthen us and where we need strengthening. Amen. Amen. You know, all you have to do is uh, listen to the bad news. You know that it's, there are things going on all over the globe. Amen. All over the globe. But it's a spiritual battle. Don't forget that. It's a spiritual war. And the word says it's already done. Amen. Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. We've overcome because we're overcomers in Christ. And he will judge the wicked. Amen. So we will be praying for everything that's going on in this world, knowing that we have a God who is able. Amen. So uh, with that, I think uh, Pastor Young Lisa might be ready. She's going to come back up. Whatever your problems. With something. Whatever your cares. Hold on. Hold to on to the Lord. Come on. Because he'll be there for you. Just hold on to the yeah. Hold on, God is strong and mighty. Have faith, have faith. God will make a way. It ain't gonna let you know that the devil get me because of my Lord. My Lord, chase him right away. Hallelujah! Do we have to hold on? Hold on, God is strong and mighty. Hold on. God is strong and mighty, got to have faith. Hallelujah! Isn't that what it is? Hold on. God is strong and mighty, got to have faith. Audrey, hold on. God is strong and mighty, got to have faith. Let me hear you. Hold on. God is strong and mighty, got to have faith. Hold on. Hallelujah! Sister Liz, hold on. God is strong and mighty, got to have faith. Have faith, God will make a way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, God, he's already, he's already y'all, he's already made a way, it's already done. That's why I get so happy up here. Where my glasses, where my glasses, Dave? He said, it doesn't matter, I'm always squinting anyway. I'm, I'm throwing them under the bus. He said, Pastor, you don't need glasses. You squint, squint with glasses and without. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Good prayer. You know what? To God be the glory. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sister Danielle, are you ready to tell us if we if we have guests uh, about, let's see, it's uh, uh, 1.35 Pacific Standard Time. So do we have any guests today? We do. Praise God, who, who, so we can say hello. So we want to acknowledge you, you all, you know, those, we want to welcome and acknowledge those joining Facebook, Zoom, and YouTube for the first time, and uh, those returning vi of, of, of viewers. So we have our beautiful sister, Danielle, and she's going to let me know, cause, because I can't really see, who's, um, if we have new guests, returning guests, or members that are on, on, on Facebook. So who do we have, uh, Danielle, so we can hello. welcome in? Today we have Ruby Tunsfeld, working from Warner Robins, Georgia. Praise and God. Welcome, he Ruby. He is Minister Dora's sister. Minister Dora. Praise God. Oh, is it the sister we've been praying for, Minister Dora? I knew Minister Dora. Ruby? Don't get excited. Oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my other sister, Ruby, but Gail is the one that we've been praying for. Praise but uh, Ruby, we prayed for a while back when she uh, lost her husband. Okay, but, praise God. Well, God bless you, Sister Ruby. Thank you so I'm much. I'm glad she's on. <laughs> oh, we are all so glad that you have bled, you're blessing us by 
uh, coming on this morning because that's our prayer for the Lord to, Lord, you bring them. We just do the praying and the Lord is going to uh, deliver them to, to hear the message and praying and hoping that something will be said that will be a blessing to you, to, to our beloved sister Ruby. We love, love, love your sister so much. We love Minister Doris so much. She is such a blessing to our uh, Spirit of True Church worldwide. So thank you for your visit. Who, who else do we have? And then we have uh, Sister Shirley Randall Pruitt. Praise God. Hello, hello, my sister. God bless you. I haven't heard from you in about a week. Maybe, no, I think it's been about a week. It could have been two weeks. But I know, I know, I know you're doing good because you're a saint of God. To God be the glory. So welcome back, Shirley. Sister Catherine Thomas. Praise God. Welcome to my, our beautiful cousin, Sister Catherine from, uh, from Michigan. God bless you. We love you, cousin. And then we have Sister Jackie. Sister Jackie, that's our, our beloved member. God bless you, Sister Jackie. Sister Jeanette. Sister Jeanette. God bless you, my sister. Sister Michelle. God bless you, my sister Michelle. God bless you. Brother Johnny and Sister Yolanda. Brother Johnny and Sister Yolanda. God bless you. God bless you guys. Sister Lucille. Sister Lucille. We had a long talk, didn't we, Sister Lucille? I enjoy talking uh, to all my sisters, but it's always a blessing. Sister Lucille, she has so many, the, just those nuggets and words of wisdom. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for Sister, our, 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 our sister Lucille. Uh, brother Andrew from California. Your brother, Brother Andrew, God bless you. Sometimes you can come visit us. So I know you can't be in every place at the same time, but uh, we, we like to see you on, on Zoom, in the Zoom room, Andrew. God bless you. Sister Patricia. Sister Patricia, God bless you. We're praying for you. Get better. The world is praying. Keeping Sister Patricia in prayer. And God hears those prayers. God answers those prayers when we're going through those storms of pain and suffering and tribulation. The Lord is right there with you, Sister Patricia. And we're there with you in spirit. Amen. Sister Lizette. Sister Lizette, God bless you, Sister. And Sister Marcia. Sister Marsha, God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us this, um, this afternoon. And we're going to unmute and thank God for you all, for our guests, for our, those on Facebook, those on Zoom. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray that you bring them, that you bring them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They could have gone anywhere else, oh God. But Lord, Thank you brought you them here to hear a word from you, God, you through your servant Joel and, and myself. Thank you, Lord. We pray that something is said, oh God, that will be a blessing to them in the name of Jesus. We hope something is read, something is said, something is prayed, something is prayed. Lord God, that will bless them and that they can use that and share it with someone else and encourage someone else in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Sister Danielle, uh, for your service and being a servant of, uh, of the Lord. And we thank all of you. Thank you, Sister Audrey. And, uh, and uh, I thank you all for your, for your servant's heart. To God be the glory. And, uh, well, you know, with the social distancing regulations and things changing, and then they, people, you know, wearing masks and then take the mask off and then put them back on when it gets... You know, when, when people start getting uh, sick again, okay, or, or now they're saying you can take the mask but hold them in your hand or keep them close by you or something so that if someone cough, oh, I don't get it. But we're going to listen to the Lord, amen? We're going to listen to Jesus. What do you say, Lord? What do you say, Lord? So as, as the social distancing regulations, they have been lifted and people are going around in places without masks. We just want to let you know we're still uh, streaming online until the Lord says so, until the Lord says so. And we know that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So whether you're online or physical building or a spiritual building, God is with you. God is with me. God is with us. And we're praying that you are being blessed by all that's said and done. Now, let me just say, if you're joining Zoom, Facebook or YouTube, you know, you can contact Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide. 
We have an email, and that's at, at info at info at SOTCWW.com. And we also have a website, and that's at SOTCWW.com. So if you're on the website, if you have a prayer concern or prayer request or praise report, or just want to say hello, then you can go on our website, you can go on, go, uh, give us, an, uh, uh, you can email us and let us know those things on the, web, on the website and on our, on our email. And as I said, we will be praying for you, you with your prayer requests going in or going through. We will intercede for you and we will pray uh, for you. And then hopefully you will get back to us with the praise reports because we know there's going to be praise reports because when we're praying, the Lord hears the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous do avail much. So we don't know how he's going to answer, but he's going to answer and we will be blessed and he will be glorified. Can the church say amen? Because he always answers. He's not, we don't, we don't serve a deaf God. He can hear. He hears our prayers. So we're so grateful and we come together and pray. We come together. That's the power. Power in prayer. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I'm going to share something. I don't know the name of the movie, but I know it was a movie and it was a true story that this person that was full of demons came into the school. It was a Christian. I think it was a Christian school because he wanted to choose a Christian school because he had it in his mind that they'll come back if he killed them, that they will come back right here on earth. So long story short, he came in, put all the kids in one room, and was going to blow up the school. Long story short, he, um, every child, they started praying. Everybody started praying. One child said, pass the word, we're going to pray. These are little children. These are little babies. They started praying. Do you know these children have testimonies of seeing angels, seeing angels uh, uh, come and helping them to safety out the window. And things happen in that room that nobody kn knew how things that the guy had. He was a professional. He knew what he was doing. But it did blow up, but not one child died in that scene. You know who died? Who perished was the person. And the, and the lady, it was a man and a woman that came to do that. So God is so faithful. Everybody was praying. God heard the prayers. He hear our prayers. He sends us help. Ministering angels to those who inherit salvation. So that's why we are serious about praying. And that, that, that movie truly, truly blessed me because I already know. I'm a living witness that God. The angels go straight up and the bomb exploded straight up instead of going out. So pastor, the angels took it up. Pastor was saying the bomb, had it exploded the way it was supposed to explode, then everybody in there would have perished. But what happened, and they cannot explain it, that if that bomb, something happened with like the angels were coming in, clipping things that allowed the explosion to go up and had the windows open. It was God just orchestrated everything. He orchestrated everything. So everything worked according to his plans. And the little children, four and five years old, they were coming back saying, describing the angels to them. And God will send angels and he will give them descriptions. And God is just, I mean, he had everything. So you see, that's why we pray. That may not happen in other situations, but God is still going to, it's going to be a blessing and God is going to be glorified, but we don't know how these things work out, but we, we know he does work it out. Amen. Amen. I'm getting excited and want to shout all over again. Do y'all feel like shouting? Keep going. Pastor said, keep going. Let him unmute and shout. <laughs> I know he got to shout at him. I know I feel like shouting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's God. If he did it, he's not a respected person. He'll do it for you. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I saw it and I was blessed. The Lord led me to that movie a couple of days ago. I don't even know the name of it, but you know what? It was a blessing. So anyway, while on the website, please feel free to submit any prayer requests because that's what we're talking about, how God answers prayers. And you can call us. We have a prayer line. We have a website. We have the email. And the prayer line is 707-759-5244.
And you can leave a prayer request. And if you desire a call back, please indicate that on your message. And uh, we will give you a call back. Amen. And we will pray with you uh, personally. Amen. Amen. Radio broadcast. I was just talking about the miracles of God. We're seeing them today. We're seeing miracles today. This is a miracle. How God is getting his word out all over the world. Miracles of God is also aired on the radio. KDYA AM 1190 on Saturdays at 1030 AM. And that's Pacific time and Sundays at 11 o'clock Pacific time. So in addition, we also have a podcast where the messages can be accessed anytime during the day. So if you miss the services on Saturday and Sunday, there's a broadcast and it broadcasts uh, uh, broadcast at that, that, uh, that time, which is at 1030 a.m. and uh, uh, 11 o'clock a.m. But on the broadcast, just log on to gospel1190.com, gospel1190.com uh, under On Air and select Program Guide and all during the week, if you miss it Saturday and Sunday, you'll be able to li listen to those messages. No matter where you are in the world, if you got an iPad, if you got a cell phone, if you got a computer or whatever, you just download. Uh, if you just download uh, KDYA and go to uh, uh, Gospel1190.com uh, under On Air, select Program Guide. There you go. You'll be able to hear the messages that the Lord gives personally. Sit down, give the messages to pastor. He writes it down as the Lord is leading and guiding him to what he wants us to share. So he's, the Lord has already prepared the meal. He's given it to Pastor Joel to serve the meal. And you just, you just have to sit, to sit down with your bibs on and, and your spoon, spiritual spoon and fork and dig in. And it is delicious. Whew, it is good. If you like beef, if you like pork, if you like uh, 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 chicken, whatever, it's better than that. Okay, you're a dessert person. If you like sweet potato pie, chocolate cake, uh, Audrey's, what kind of Audrey's cake, banana cake, pineapple cake, better than that. Spiritual food, I can't, you can't even describe spirit, spiritual food. It stays with you forever, forever, and you don't gain weight. So... Praise God. It's very nourishing. So to God be the... How did I get on food? That, did you ever come off of it? That's what <laughs> he said... <laughs> he said, oh, Pastor always made me laugh. He always made me... He said, did I ever come off of it? But to God be the glory. All right. Until further notice, uh, our, our Sunday services will continue to be live streamed on Facebook. You can also view Sunday messages on YouTube. They're downloaded and available for viewing within a few days. Amen. You can subscribe to Pastors Joel and Annalisa Jones or Spiritual Church Worldwide. Here we preach and evangelize the uncompromised Word of God. And in case you didn't know, Zoom is live stream on Facebook as well. On Facebook, search for... Spirit of True Church Worldwide, and you like our page, and once you like our page, you will receive notifications whenever we are live, and you will be able to view the Sunday service as well as worship with our Zoom family. You're able to worship live with our Zoom family, and you know what? We have a family member. I think that this family member has been with us could have been, maybe, I know it's been over six months. It could have been a year, I'm not sure. But my cousin, Sister Yvonne from Chicago, she, she's working from home, but you see her little face on, on Zoom. God bless her. She is, she's always on, she's like, she, well, she is a family member. She has become a family member of uh, Spirit of True Church Worldwide. So we thank God for bringing, now we got a big family. Brandel Jones have a big family, but I tell you, I, got, I thank the Lord for bringing my, I call her my, my cousin, sister, slash God sister, because her mother practically ra raised me, and I loved her. So my mother's uh, mother is Ruby, and she's, uh, she's with the Lord now, but she's a godly woman. So I thank you, Sister Yvonne, because we need to, to acknowledge you as well for always being present and, and a part of our Zoom family. So thank God for you. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. prayer, 8 o'clock Bible study. Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. Pastor Joel and I have the privilege of ministering to the people of India. 
We are able to broadcast live on Grace TV in India from the U.S. via YouTube. In addition to India, Grace TV uh, reaches Singapore, Malaysia, Germany, the United Kingdom, and all uh, Gulf Muslim countries, and of course the United States. Now we're understanding, we're understanding, we didn't know it 10, 11 years ago, but we're understanding more and more why God gave us the name Spirit of True Church Worldwide. Praise God for modern technology. Thank you, Lord. We thought it was just going to be Spirit of True Church, uh, uh, community church. But you know what? The Lord said, no, worldwide. So praise God, praise God that he's taken us worldwide through modern technology. And um, thank God for Pastor Kumar. Uh, we, he is a blessing. We met him over 10 years ago, and the Lord just blessed us to um, minister together on Thursdays. And if you wish to uh, support Pastor Kumar's vision and burden for India, he if you have a preaching, singing, hosting, Bible study, or you just want to share your church service, you can contact or a testimony. You can contact Pastor Kumar on Grace TV India channel. Uh, contact Pastor Kumar by email. So if you have any of those things, something that God has put in your heart, a, a burden for India, that you can share with India those things, uh, you can contact Pastor Kumar. His email address is Christ at gmail.com, and Liz will put that on our Facebook page. Amen. Friday mornings, 11 o'clock a.m., Spiritual Church Worldwide, women are in prayer, women only. Saturday morning, the men are in prayer, men only. They're in prayer at 8 o'clock a.m. To God be the glory. Uh, so to God be the glory, uh, let's see. Uh, we're not going to do, we're going to go into the tithes and offering. Right, Liz? Not the, not the happy birthday. That's afterwards. Before. Are we going to go to a happy birthday before the tithes and offering? Yes. Okay. All right. Are you all ready for the happy birthday? Everyone born in February is a lot. Now, if you have family member, tell them to get on Facebook so we can give them a, a happy birthday shout out. We have, we do that. We acknowledge because God blessed these people to be born. These are men and women of God that the Lord has blessed to be a part of our lives and a part of our communities. We have a happy birthday to those born in February. A shout out to Minister Dora, Sister Liz, Brother Ron Ewan, Wanda Wallace, uh, Benny Kumar, Pastor Kumar's son, Beverly Williams, who's no longer with us. Well, her birthday was in, is in February. Uh, Marie Bert, uh, Burden, that's Liz's sister, Liz's sister, Liz's sister. Verna Joshua, that's Sister Liz's uh, aunt, who turned 100 years old on the 4th. Praise God. And, you know, we used to celebrate. These are people we also used to celebrate. Uh, I know we used to celebrate her birthday and Janet DeGray and, and Larry McFarlane. And there's so many others that we celebrate. But if your birthday was in February, we can't mention everybody's name, but we want to give you a happy birthday shout, shout out. Amen. Amen. All right. You all know how we do it, and we're going to do it, and we're going to wish everybody happy birthday to all of you. A one, a two, a one, two, three. A happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Well... We're giving you this message for the things you do. A happy birthday to you. Well, well, are you 18, 20, or 102? Happy birthday to you. This is coming from your brothers and your sisters, too. A happy birthday to you. Well, well, we hope you have a party today. Now, now, we all gather today right here and going to wish you a happy birthday cheer. Because another group could not be found whom we would like to greet and start throwing down. Happy birthday to you. We're giving you this message for the things you do. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Well, all one and two. Well, all of you. A happy birthday to you. This is coming from the pastor and the whole church, too. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Well, well. We, we hope you have, have a party today. today. Amen. Party with the Lord. Eat some cake for us. Praise Amen. God. Oh, Amen. Sorry. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yvonne, your sister Nisi had a birthday. I don't I forgot to put her name on here. But 
But you all know who you are and you know when your birthdays are. And so happy birthday to you all. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. So we're going to uh, go into our tithes and offerings. We're still in the uh, part of our worship. And we, when we even when we do the birthday, uh, sing the birthday song, we're thanking the Lord for these people. Before the foundation of the world, he already knew they would be born. He already knew how they would serve the kingdom of God. So we are grateful and we're grateful for those that he had here and are no longer with us and how he used them to be a part of our lives and a part of the kingdom of God. So thank you, thank you, uh, birthday. Uh, happy birthday again to all you all of you born in February. So uh, for those joining on Facebook and YouTube, if you wish to partner with Spirit of True Church Worldwide and our endeavor to further, because that's what it's all about. It's all about furthering the kingdom of God. And we have two convenient and secure ways to do so. And the ways that you can uh, be a blessing to Spirit of True Church Worldwide uh, financially or prayerfully, feel free to give a donation uh, by visiting our website at SOTC, there go those websites again, SOTCWW.com. Again, you can submit your prayer request there. So whether you have, regardless of if it's a donation or if it's a prayer, this is where you submit it. Or you can download the app. There's an app out there. And the Lord, before this pandemic, uh, knew that we would be going back inside. And he blessed us to have this app called Givelify. G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. It's called Give because you're giving. Lify. And it's, you can uh, use your mobile device or computer. And if you're using Givelify, you can search again for Spirit of True Church Worldwide. Spirit of True Church Worldwide. And if you prefer, you can also donate using a personal check, money order, or cashier's check made payable to Spiritual Church Worldwide. And Liz is going to put all this information on the Facebook page. You can mail it to Spiritual Church Worldwide or acronym STCW, P.O. Box 20894, L. Sobrante, California, 94820. So we thank the Lord. We thank God for your prayers. We thank God for your donations because of, of any amount because it is going to further the kingdom of God to get that word out. And we thank God. We're thanking God in advance for you. And we're going to also take this time to pray for things not yet seen or received, but we know that the check is in the mail because God is faithful. God is faithful. So I think we have uh, Brother Dave who will lead us into prayer over the offerings received. And I say received because it's already done. Amen. Amen. The Lord gave me 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8. So, so let us each give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you have always have all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Love that word, abundance you, Lord. for every good thank work. You, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word, for your promise, for your grace. And today we give as part of our worship. Yes, Lord. And we delight with the giving. So Lord, bless each and every member and every person who gives today that we may take and live in that abundance that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the church can unmute and say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. We receive, amen. We receive amen. that prayer. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Scripture reading, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, in the New King James Version. So if you got your Bibles, get it out. Get out your Bibles because you're going to need it. Amen. It says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. 
We're going to bring up Pastor Joel Jones with a message today called uh, Examine Yourself, Part 1. Pastor Joel Jones. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. So good to be here. As always, God is faithful. He's good, isn't he? Amen. Isn't he good? Yes, God he is, is all ex the time. excellent. I don't have the words. I don't have the adjective to describe him. Mm -mm. I just know he's better than good. He's gooder than good and he's greater than great. Amen. Amen. As the kids would say, you're gooder than good. He's better than that. Amen. I Amen. can't even describe him. Amen. So in the book of Psalm 121, it, tell, it tells us, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from Thank the Lord, you, Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you shall not slumber. And it says, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. It says, So the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. He shall preserve your going out and coming in from this time forth. And guess what? Even forevermore. How is that for a promise? Amen. Amen. How is that for how the, the, the Lord will carry you? That the sun shall not even strike you by day, nor the moon by night. It will be hot sometime, but there's a hotter place. The Lord is saying that your help comes from him, no matter what you're going through. Amen. Amen. That's something to rejoice about. That's something to be glad about. I always compare things to the times we're living in now, what God has done in the past and what he's doing for us now. So let's keep that. Hold on to that. Keep it in your knapsack, knowing that you know where your help comes from. Amen. Amen. It comes from the Lord. Thank Praise you. God. So let's go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to come before you and uh, hear your word. Lord, I ask you to uh, open our hearts, open our ears to hear what you have for us, all those that have joined us today, and all those that will hear in the future through modern technology. Yes. Bless us now to be fed your word in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. So let's see what the Lord has for us. Let me put on my other eyes. I know he gave me eyes to see with, and then he gave me some more. Praise Thank God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, all right. Our, our, our sermon today, as Pastor Annalisa has said, is um, examine yourself. Uh, the, the sermon is Examine Yourself, and the title is contained in our memory verse, which uh, you all have just heard. I heard Pastor Annalisa reading it, so, uh, reciting it, but I'm going to ask her to do this and recite it one more time. Pastor, could you uh, just recite that verse one more time, please, mm -hmm. for us? Do you mind? Of course, I'd love to. I'd love to read I got to light mine. Hold on a minute. Go ahead. Okay. Examine yourselves. Okay, I'm reading 2 Corinthians 13, 5. And it says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Mm -hmm. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. <clears throat> but I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. All right. Thank you, Pastor. And I wanted her I wanted her to read that again so you all can hear this scripture fresh off the burner. Don't treat it as an afterthought. Um, I wanted us all to hear it so that we can all get a taste of what it's saying and what Paul is was saying to the Corinthians, because that's who he was addressing at that time. OK, uh, Paul is calling the church to examine themselves mm -hmm, to see if they are all in the faith. The church needed to see for themselves if they were in the faith. Now, what does that mean to be in the faith? That's a good question, okay? Because we know um, what it means to have faith, right? I mean, most of us, I can surmise, I can believe that most people who come to church and most people who, are, uh, who read the Bible, at least on a regular basis, will or should know about faith. Wouldn't you agree? 
-hmm. Okay, if you're reading the Bible, if you're coming to church, if you're paying any kind of attention, you're going to know a thing or two about faith. All right? Saving faith and etc. And we all know Hebrews 11.1, 1, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to ask her to read that one. We pretty much know that it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what? Things, things not seen. seen. We know that has to do with faith. Mm -hmm. You all know about Hebrews 11.6. You walk down the road a few more verses and 11.6 says what? Without it, without faith, it's impossible, it's impossible to please who? God, right? It's impossible to please him. Amen. Meaning God. So, and there are many other scriptures in the Bible pertaining to faith and having faith, which churches uh, uh, toss around quite a bit. We toss these terms around quite a bit. Amen. But what Paul is alluding to, uh, uh, what he's alluding to in this scripture verse in 2 Corinthians uh, 13, 5, we're wondering what he's talking about. Well, Paul is calling the Corinthians to examine themselves or check themselves to see if they are in the faith. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in for a minute. Not how much you know about faith. Are you in the faith? Okay. You see, church, many people claim to have faith. Many people claim to know about faith. But are they really in the faith? Are you in the faith? Not necessarily. See, that's why Paul insisted that the church back then go back and examine yourselves to see if you are truly in the faith. You see, because many people can tell you about faith, yet not be in the faith. Does that make sense? Somebody can tell you about faith, but not be in the faith. Listen. Listen. You can be in church, but not be in the Lord. Does that sound right? Doesn't sound good, but I'm just asking you, is it true? Can you be in the church and not be in the faith? Of course, of course. Am I right? Remember Matthew 7, 21? What does Jesus say in Matthew 7, 21? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven except him who does the will of my Father in heaven. He was talking about people working miracles, doing signs, speaking in tongues. You don't think they have been in church? But when it came down to the final come down, can you turn that light over, please? This one here. When it came to, thank you, when it came to the, the final, final, something was amiss, you all. Somebody missed the, the point or missed the boat or whatever. See, being in a church building even, being in a church building doesn't guarantee, uh, uh, doesn't guarantee anybody that they're in the faith. Just being in church doesn't guarantee that you're in, in, in the faith no more than sitting in a library makes you a scholar. Sit there all day if you want to. Okay, doesn't, make, doesn't mean that you're going to come out learned. It doesn't mean that you're going to come out changed, you see. You're right there in place, but it's more to it than that. That's what I'm trying to say. Amen, Sister Karen? It's more to it than that. I see Karen nodding her head. See, you all helping me. Because I'm getting confirmation that I'm on the right track. And I know that because the Lord gave it to me. But it's good to see that. We're on the, uh, there's more to it than just coming and showing up or, or saying you're in, in that place. So then, there are people who can tell you all you care to hear about faith. But when it comes time for demonstrative faith, instead of telling you about faith, sometimes they do an about face. Sometimes they go the other way. Okay. Not that they run away, but in their actions and in their behavior, they've turned away from the faith. That's right. That's right. Far too often people behave one way in church and another way out of church. Have y'all seen that? We've all seen it. Or some people are great at giving you advice, but seem to have a problem when it comes to accepting advice themselves. Have we seen that? Yes, we have, of course. Well, this is what Paul was trying to get across to the people of Corinth. He was trying to get this across to them. And don't you know that this is also timely and relevant for churches today? Amen. It's relevant for us today in these last days, you all. It's so relevant that we can't play church. 
We can't play church and we can't play Kate. We're not going to. We're not trying to please somebody else's uh, way of thinking. We have to operate by God's way, by God's parameters. Amen. So this is also very timely for us. Okay, it's very timely for all of us in today's church. This text then calls for us to examine ourselves to see if we are truly in Christ, to see if we are truly. Christians, okay, a Christ follower. You all heard me say this. I say it over and over again. All disciples are believers, but not all believers are disciples, okay? Some people need to be discipled, and we all get discipled, but are we all disciples, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Where are we on that scale? Examine ourselves is what we have to do. You see, Christians are to behave in a certain manner, amen? We should. We are called to do that. For example, Pastor, can you read to us what it says in the book of James? James 1, 22 to 24. I'm sure some of you know this right off the top of your head. You'll get to it before we get to it. But read that one for us, Pastor. James 1, 22, 24 mm -hmm. says, But be doers of the word, doers of the word. and not hearers only, mm -hmm. deceiving yourselves. Deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, mm -hmm. for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. All right, all right, all right. All right, so it takes more than just hearing the word, doesn't it? It's telling us that. It takes more than just hearing that word, all right? This text suggests that we have to do more than just hear God's word or speak God's word or even teach God's word, huh? It's telling us that we got to do more than just give God word, God's word. We got to live God's word. Yes. That's what it's saying. You got to live it. OK, and some people are teaching or pretending to teach or preach or whatever it is and, and spouting the word. But are we about the word? That's what it's telling us. This word says it's like looking at yourself in a mirror. And as soon as you turn away from that mirror, okay. you forget what you look like. So that, well, how does that make sense? Well, I guess it happens. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> well, I don't look in the mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. No, I don't look in the mirror. Well, okay, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. But anybody ever sat through an hour or a two-hour sermon in church and heard about fornicating or uh, uh, heard about that being a sin or evil and then find him or herself in somebody's bed that same night? Mm -hmm. it's pretty That's forgetting what you look like. Mm -hmm. Maybe even that same Say week. Say amen to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe not. Anybody ever been in church talking about loving your brother and loving your sister and you, and you wind up cursing somebody out on the way home on the freeway because they cut in front of you or they give you the finger and you give them the bird and you just talked about loving your brother and being patient, all the things in Galatians 5, 22, love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness. You talk about all those things, and as soon as they give you the bird, you give them the, the seagull. And you, uh, <laughs> and you got Jesus loves you written all on your bumper sticker. You got, that, you got that Jesus fish on the back of your window, and you got a cross got around a cross your like neck <laughs> and got both fingers out the window. So they, Come on now. Oh, We've seen Lord. that. That's what it means to forget what we look like. Uh-huh. Uh, that's what it means, you all. And I've said this before. One minute you're in church saying, oh, hallelujah. And the next minute you're out of church saying, oh, I'm going to do ya. And we've seen that happen several times, right? Mm -hmm. This is what it means to forget what we look like. Mm-hmm. Better go back to that mirror and remember what we're supposed to be like. That's yeah. what Paul is talking about. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to look like, what we're supposed to look like and act like is who? Christ. Amen. That's why we are supposed to be Christ-like. Amen? I mean, people should see Christ in us if we are truly in the faith. We should take on the characteristics of Christ Jesus, right? That's the case. And with many people... 
Unfortunately, that's seldom the case. So have you all ever heard the phrase, being blind in one eye and can't see out the other? The old people used to say that. Didn't they, Sister Liz? Now I'm old and I'm saying it. Blind in one eye and can't see out the other. You heard them say that, right? <laughs> well, that's a comparable phrase to another phrase that means being blind to our own faults, but only focusing on the faults of others. Same kind of twist in there, okay? Uh, 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 either way, you're blind. That's what I'm saying. And that's why we've got to examine ourselves. Sometimes we don't know that we can't see. We've been seeing our rose-colored glasses for so long that we really don't get the big picture, you all. Amen. And that's what Paul and, and James are getting across with all these scriptures. The word says, just as we sometimes have to get physical checkups, we certainly do need to get our spiritual checkups. That's where examine yourself is, talk, is, is, is coming from. That's what it's talking about, okay? We need to get those spiritual checkups as well. But watch this. Let's go to uh, Psalm 26, please, Pastor, and take us to verses 2 and 3 and read what that has to say for us. Psalms 26. Psalm 26. Mm-hmm. Verses 2 and 3 says, Examine me, O mm -hmm. Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and, how, and I have walked in your truth. All right. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, this is, this is a Psalm of David, right? David saying, Examine me, Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. That's what he's saying. He said, I've walked in your truth. Now, uh, that's, that's David talking, King David. And uh, what is he doing according to this psalm? He's asking the Lord to do what? Examine him. Mm -hmm. He's saying, check me out. He says, examine me, Lord, and, and prove me. I stand before you to be examined. I want to get a passing grade. Amen. Okay. He's asking the Lord. He's imploring the Lord to, to test him, to check him. How many of you ask the Lord to check you out? Lord, try me on life. this, Lord. Mm -hmm. How many of us go through trial and say, hmm, I know I can come through this. Lord, try me again. Hmm. We don't usually do that. Huh? We don't ask for trouble. We don't want no trouble, okay? Rather have bubbles than troubles, right? Give me something to wash up with, but don't give me that, amen? But, but we're saying that, uh, granted, there is something good in there. David said, try me. Try me, Lord. Maybe, I don't know what the affliction was that he's asking to be tried, but we don't usually ask for it. But you know it's coming anyway, right? You know it's coming anyway. So David is saying, try me on this. Remember now, we need a spiritual checkup. I said that, didn't we? And here we see David imploring the Lord to check him out, give him that checkup, to prove him. And remember, saints, David was a man of whom God said what? He was a man after his own heart. And we can see evidence of that right here. But still, David is asking to be examined. And specifically, where? I mean, specifically, where did David ask to be examined? What part of him did he want God to examine? Oh. Did he say, examine how I walk, examine how I talk, examine how I dress, examine my tithes, Lord? Did he say, examine how many hallelujahs I can throw out? Did he say <laughs> that, Lord? Did he say, examine my tongues and watch me speak them, Lord? No, he said, examine my heart. Yes. He yes. said, examine my heart. Amen. Yes, amen. So I thought you was holding a heart. He said, examine my heart. Exactly. Yes. See, and because that's what it means to be examined by God. David said, examine my heart. And then he yes. said, and prove me. Prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Mm. Mm. He said, try my mind and and my heart. That's what he said. If you're going to try me, Lord, try all of me. Huh? Yes. Uh, take all of me, Lord. Yes. Try all of me. See, there can't be one way with the Lord. You got to be all 
all the way with the Lord. If you want the Lord to try you, expect him to try you in places that you don't feel comfortable in. Yes. Expect him to try you and walk you to places that you've never been before. Don't expect him to try you when you got a full stomach and a toothpick in your mouth watching your 7 o'clock evening show and then tell you, do you love me? Of course, you're going to say, yeah, but wait till you're out there in the street or you yeah, don't have yes. the money or they're messing with you or somebody's coming to get you at work. Mm -hmm. Then say, try me, Lord. I know I can come through this. That's what David did. Yes. That's what he did. Thank you, Lord. But listen to what he says in verse uh, 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 three. He says, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. That tells you right there that David had been walking with the Lord. He said, your loving kindness is right there. I see it. I feel it. I've experienced it. I don't have to guess about it. Me and you, Lord, I'm with you. And then he makes a declaration. He said, because I've walked in your truth. He said, I'm with you, Lord. You, you basically can't tell me that I'm not walking with you. I know you that well. I know you well enough to know that I'm with you. I may not have gotten where I need to go yet. I may not have seen everything that you're going to show me, but I know I'm with you. I'll live my life. Believing that. Now that's powerful stuff. Thank you, Lord. That's powerful stuff. That's what it means to be examined, folks. That's what it means to be examined by the Lord. Can you stand in his presence? Can you stand in your heart and say, I'm going before the Lord. Hear my Lord. Send me. Right. Not that you're feeling proud about anything, but you've got to have the assurity that you, you and the Lord, we are walking together. Amen. 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 That's what he's talking about. Right in the heart. Try me. Mm -hmm. That's because nobody really knows the heart, though, do they? Nobody really knows. That's a bold statement for that young man to make, or that old man, however old he was at that time. But that's a bold statement to make. That's because many people really don't know the heart. Even when you know your heart somewhat, you don't know it enough. Amen. That the Bible tells us in so many places, in so many ways, that we simply cannot know our own hearts. Tell us, Pastor. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. What does it tell us about the heart? One more time. Jeremiah Look at it with, 17, listen to it with fresh 9 ears. 9 and 10. And the Lord is reminding us again. Of our hearts. Come the on. heart uh -huh. is deceitful of all things mm -hmm. and Desperately, Desperately wicked. wicked. Who can know it? Who? Who can know it? Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, search the heart. Mm -hmm. I test the mind. And that's what David said. Test Even my heart, test my to mind. Give every man according to his ways, Try me. according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. That's powerful. Because the Lord, David asked the Lord. To examine him and try his heart and to try his mind. That's what he said. I know it's wicked. Try it anyway. I know it's deceitful above all things. Try it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know why he said try it anyway? Because I'm lining it up with you, Lord. I know it's dirty, but I expect it to be clean. Check it and see if I, how, what I have to do to get my heart clean. Check my mind to see how much I have to wash out of there. I need to be brainwashed, Lord. It's so much in my head that they need to wash it out, Lord, and wash you in. Lord, I need a, a, a fresh do for you inside my mind, inside my heart, inside my body. That's what he's talking about. Thank you, Lord. That's what we're talking about. Thank you, Lord. Because it's so desperately wicked. Who can know it besides you, God? Who can know it besides you, Lord? That's what he's saying, amen? amen. Try my mind. That was truly, truly. What, Dave wanted the Lord to see what was truly there in his spirit. I'm getting real familiar with David. I just called him Dave. But, but <laughs> that Dave too. Dave wants to know and King David wanted to know. Hey, amen? Now listen to what the word tells us in Proverbs 28. Verse 26, watch this one now. Proverbs 28, 26 tells us, mm -hmm. he who trusts in his own heart is God. a fool. Oh. Is a fool. Ooh. Is a fool. Stop. But, <laughs> but whoever walks wisely 
will be delivered. You know when she said three times, I make that. I wonder who she talking about around town. No. But I said, <laughs> no one time is good enough. <laughs> trust in his own heart. But praise God, I'm just kidding. But we see that he, that he who trusts in his own heart, it says, is a fool, and whoever walks wisely will be delivered. I thank you for that, Pastor. You see, you can't trust your own heart. That's all it's saying. You can't trust your own heart on its own merit, saints. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a foolish thing to do. It's foolhardy, in other words, to do that. That's what it's saying. The Bible, the Word of God is telling us right here that we'd be foolish to blanketly trust in our own hearts. Amen. Your own emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, your, your heart follows your own conscience and your own temptation. They all go together. You got to be careful about that. It's telling us that we are to walk wisely. Now, that's important. Now, we're going to get into something. It says when you walk wisely, that means to walk in wisdom in order to be what? What does it say right there? Let me see that again. It says you'll be what? Delivered. Delivered. Okay? That's important. Did you all notice the word delivered in there? It says he who trusts his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. So then, so then, the, uh, 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 the goal is to be delivered. Amen. The, uh, uh, let's talk about that for a minute. I think we'll see how it lines up with examining ourselves. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus himself teaches us how to pray. We went over the Lord's Prayer. We'll probably go over it again. The Lord's Prayer uh, uh, in the epistle of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, right? There's the Lord's Prayer. We're not going to go through the whole thing. I trust that you all are familiar with the Lord's Prayer. I know that uh, right here uh, our regulars are familiar with it, but and just in case somebody who's viewing this is not familiar with the uh, 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 with with. Uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer. Look at Matthew in the book of Matthew and look in chapter 6 and go over verses 9 to 13 in your study time and meditate on what Jesus has laid out for us there and you'll see what it means. But getting back to my point about being delivered, it, it means to be rescued from evil. And it talks about it in the prayer. Jesus said this is how we ought to pray. This is the model prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Deliver us from evil. And a few sections in, in King James, it says from evil. And, and a few other verses say, uh, a few other translations, it says from the evil one, meaning Satan. But we know that it means to be delivered from evil and wickedness. Amen. Amen. We need to be delivered from those things. That's what the scripture is saying in uh, the Lord's Prayer. Now, that's what these scriptures in Psalm 26 what David is talking about, and Proverbs 28, and yes, the Lord's Prayer, the Word is saying that we need to be cured of sin. Basically, that's what it's talking about. Don't be foolish. You need to be delivered from your wicked ways and the wicked ways of the world. You need to be delivered from evil. You need to be delivered from the evil, delivered, be delivered from the evil of drugs and alcohol and, and whatever else may come on anger and rage yes. and, and uh, deceitfulness, uh, con artists type of things. All of this, we need to be self-serving, self-seeking. All of these, we need to be delivered and healed from the sickness of sin. Yeah. That's what it's saying. And wickedness. But let's look at this way. Look at it this way, church. How can you address an ailment without first examining yourself to see what you got? How do you know you're sick when you've been living in it for so long? I was living in it for so long, I didn't think I was sick. I thought everybody were. Er, mm -hmm. Not everybody. I thought everybody was like that. Like okay, fish tank it was like living in the fishbowl when you've been living in dirty water for so long. You sometimes don't know it's dirty. Okay, mm -hmm. I thought it was that's just the way it is. All men are the same. All women are the same. This is the way it is. You're not a man unless you uh, 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 conquer the world and conquer uh, whatever comes along. You got to conquer it. You got to. You know what I mean. You're not a man. Uh, uh, so, so it led to infidelity. I'm not making excuses. I'm saying you, telling you how I felt, how the men in my family felt, how my friends felt, how my heroes felt. Not that I had a hero, but the guys that I hung with, we had a pact. So 
This is a sin. You don't even know. You don't even know you're sick, boy. <laughs> you are sick spiritually. Don't you know that? Amen. Who told you you could get a, a hit of a hit of weed or a hit of hemp or a hit of uh, cocaine and, and think you're just going to bounce back from it? You are sick with your own pride. You are sick with your own self-aggrandizement. That's Amen. what this word is saying. Speak, Lord. That's what it's saying. From the sickness of sin, we need to be delivered from the sickness of sin. That's what this is saying. You can't address an ailment if you don't really know you got it. You got to examine yourself, see? Let me give you a brief testimony. Just brief, just brief. I'll try to keep it brief. But I think it plays into this somehow. I remember when I played college football and I uh, had a shot to, to, to go pro and, and, and I was playing football and I was a linebacker. I, uh, those of you who hear this, if you don't understand football, don't worry about it, but those who do will know. Linebackers are, is a very feared position. Uh, you're the you're the uh, uh, the point man. You go and get the the ball carrier. So you got but 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 coming with playing linebacker, you got people that are going to try to take you out. And usually they're big people. They're big people like Big Dave, but bigger. They're six seven. They're two three hundred twenty pounds. They're just as mean as you are. It and and they're coming to take you out. So may the best man win. Now, at the time, I was at Iowa. I was in the, the state of Iowa. And we, we, we were at 110 degree weather in the sun, and we were playing, practicing twice a day, so five hour a day practices, and uh, and uh, tempers flare, tempers flare when you're hitting each other for five hours a day, and and some of you don't even like each other. As as I said, let me get this straight right now. I was not saved, so I was full of pride. Okay, I was full of anger. Yes, I was. That's why I played linebacker. And I guess that's why they put me at that position. They said, oh, we got a position for you, buddy. So again, I didn't. Uh, uh, I was very angry, and uh, I wasn't going to take it. So I had developed a, their, uh, the, the offensive linemen, the big giant guys, who I, who I did was to take you out. Then they knew they had to take me out. Okay, so at practice, this is your own teammates, but at practice, I happened to make a tackle, and as I made the tackle, I felt the pressure of someone coming behind me, like a huge roller coaster. I felt the rumbling in the 110 degree heat, and when I turned, they did what you call a, a, a blind side block. That means you turn, and that's all you remember, if you remember that. They call it a D cleater because the cleats you wear, sometimes that's all they see because your cleats are one place and you're somewhere else. Your shoes are there and they knock you right out of your shoes if you're not taped up. They call it a D cleater. So, I, but, and I say this again, God was with me even when I didn't know him because what happened was this guy that tried to cripple me because if they hit you in your hip or your knee and you don't see them, they, yes, that's your career. And so when he turned, when he hit me, I happened to turn and I nullified the hit by, by grabbing his jersey and spinning. So he did hit me, but not as bad as he wanted to. And we tumbled and we rolled. And my guys, the linebacker said, that was a cheap shot. That was a cheap shot. You tried to hit him. You tried to hurt him. And this guy, once I saw who it was, he did. He tried to take me out. Oh, yes, the fight was on. <laughs> The fight was on then. So we tumbled and we rolled and we swung, swung at it, swung, no such word as swung. But we swung and we hit and we, we clawed in the dirt on the field and trying to, trying to get position. He was much bigger than me. He was, uh, again, 320 pounds, just as mean as I was. I was about 250 or so. But what happened in, in that event was something happened where my strength simply left me. I don't know what happened. I didn't know what happened at the time, but I couldn't keep him off me and I wound up on my back. And when I was on my back, he was on top and he was swinging, boom, 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 hitting me in the face, boom, at least nine, 10 times, taking the blows. Nobody stopped it. This is what they wanted to see. They wanted to see a linebacker, the head of the linebackers taken down. 
okay? And so everybody just stood back and watched the fight. Well, what happened was uh, I had my helmet on. Poor kid, he didn't know he didn't have sense enough to take my helmet off and really do me some damage. But So I really didn't feel the punches. Again, the Lord was with me. He sent me somebody who didn't really know how to fight. So he didn't know how to take the helmet off. So what happened was I was so weak, I couldn't grab him, I couldn't hold on, uh, but I had been trained. I was a trained fighter. And I'm sorry, but I had to use what I know to save my skin. So I applied, and I'm trying to make this short, and again, I'm going somewhere with it. I applied what is called a scarf hold, which football players probably didn't know about, but you do know about it when you study martial arts. And I grabbed the jersey, the back of the jersey, and as he's swinging, all I did was hook my hand in the jersey and hook the other hand this way, and the radial bone, bones of my uh, arm cut off the circulation to his neck. So as he's swinging, and he's getting tired because he's big, <laughs> he's swinging, all of a sudden he goes, eyes pop up they look like the boiled eggs that I used to eat for breakfast and now I roll him over on his back and I said keep swinging because he couldn't swing anymore so when they saw this because he was thrashing and getting ready to go out they said, get Joel off of him before he kills him. And then they jumped in and everybody jumped off. Now, I tell that story. Afterwards, what happened was I was so weak and drained and that they gave him oxygen and whatever else they were doing, I stumbled to the sideline and I went to the doctor when I got home. And the doctor told me, hey, what are you doing practicing? You've got, a, you've got a, an infection, a very bad infection from bacteria and I didn't know how I got it but at, on, on those days we used to dip our cup in the great in the Gatorade trough they would say break time and you go and you dip, you take your cup and you're supposed to dip it and use the spoon and dip it but you got sweaty football players over the trough just dipping the cup dipping the cup and drinking it and getting back and tossing your hair back and going back in there dripping in the in the Gatorade we were just like big, big old Brahma bull buffaloes. <laughs> and well, buffalo. <laughs> and some of them would just throw the Gatorade on their head. It didn't matter as long as it was wet. And, and this had been going on. I had been sick for a week. My, my, my resistance was down. He said, your temperature is 104, son. You could have died. And I had been pushing it and fighting it. I say that. Uh, uh, he said, didn't you feel anything? Did you know? But I was so... I was so intent on doing my job, I, I'll fight till I die, I'll play, I'll, I'm going to practice. And, but I had to examine myself. See, I had to examine where I was. I needed to examine myself physically, but I had to go to a doctor and he examined me further and told me what my problem was. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's how we are right now. Normally, I wouldn't have even had a problem. I could, but, 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 it, but, but like I said, it, it took that to teach me to see that I needed an examination. And what I'm saying is that we don't want to wait until we're at death's door. Even if it's a physical ailment, you know when you're not feeling right. But in the spirit, we got to know when we're not doing right. We got to know that we need to examine ourselves because sooner or later you're going to go before the doctor, the great physician, and he's really going to tell you what's going on. But David said, I got to examine me now because I want to get it right. We need to get it right as Christ followers. I say that was a lesson. I don't think there's anything that's gone on in my life that I can't go back to in my mind and see God in it. That's why I know he called me for this purpose at this time. If you've ever been where you can't walk and you can't defend yourself and you are weak as I don't know what, will you still trust him? Will you still rely on him to give you the strength? If you don't examine yourself, you won't know until it happens. That's why Paul said, examine yourselves, church, because maybe you haven't been on death's door. Maybe you haven't been on death row spiritually is what I'm talking about. But that's what we need to look at. So the tables turn when that happens. Well, this is what we do as Christ's followers. 
we have to be able to take the time to examine ourselves. Amen. Examine ourselves. I hope you see the point of that. We can't afford to walk around. I was walking around sick, you all. Temperature of 104, and I thought it was just the heat. I was going through, uh, 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 what's that, when you, when you, when it's so hot, dehydration. I was going through something else, uh, heat, heat, heat exhaustion, all of that. My skin was dry, all things that don't happen. I sweat like, a, I sweat all the time. There was no sweat. Doctor said, you, you, you could be, you could have had a heart attack. You could have had any, anything could have happened to you. You see what I mean? So I was walking around sick, uh, uh. And, 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 and not know it, not didn't know it, had the nerve to be fighting 300 pounders. So the, that was the Lord saving me. But you're going through some fights now. We're going through some struggles right now. And, and, and we're walking around, but we can't afford to walk around sick with sin. Amen. We can't afford to walk around sick with envy, you, sick with jealousy, sick yes. with hard heartedness, yes. sick with lust, sick with yes. adultery, sick with latent yes. homosexuality. Yes. Pastors going around uh, with, with young boys on the down low. You can't afford to walk around yes. sick with yes. anything. You can't be exactly. under color of authority. All ailing spiritually, exactly. all needing to be examined daily. Yes. It takes daily examination. Amen. Daily examination. Sick with I know it all when you don't know much at all. Sick yes. with it. We can't afford to do it now. We can't afford to do it. It'll get us in trouble. Amen. Ailing spiritually, needing examination daily from unseen forces that Amen. are plaguing us. Amen. This Amen. is truth. Nothing but the truth. So this sermon message is for all of us, but especially for those in the church. Because the natural man doesn't under, understand the things of God. But those of us that are in the church, we understand these things better. So it's especially for us. The uh, Apostle Paul points out that we need to examine ourselves Amen. as God has already examined us all. He already knows. He already knows what we're going through. So before I close out to, for today, I'm going to ask Pastor Annalise to take us to one more scripture verse. I think this is in Psalm 17, verse 3 and 4. If I gave you that one, Pastor, I hope I gave yes. you the right one. Psalm 17, verses 3 and 4. Did I say that? Yes, yeah, Psalms. Yeah, I Psalm. have Psalm 17, 3 and 4. Okay. Okay, and it says, um, 3 and 4 says, hmm. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. Hmm. You have tested me and have found nothing. Ah. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. All right, all right, praise God. That's that's a prayer of David, and David is is saying something right here. This 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 psalm speaks of committed determination on this on this uh, man's part. Determined, determined, uh, 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 commit, c c commitment. Uh, committed determination. He said, you've tested my heart. Okay? He's talking to the Lord. You have visited me in the night. You've tried me and have found nothing. I've purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. In other words, I'm not going to transgress. I'm not going to go against your ways, Lord. I know you've checked me and I believe I believe that I'm in good standing with you. Are we in good standing with the Lord? Can we say that we are operating according to God's standards? David was determined on the part, on his part, on being tested and looking to have passed the tests. Are we, are, can we say the same thing according to God's standards? Still, we can't, we can't expect to get to the point of passing God's exams unless we're willing to undergo self-examination. Amen. Before you take a test, don't you check the, the, the material to see if you got it at all? Well, that's the same way with us. So we've got to do some self-examination along the way. Amen? Amen. So in closing for this week, let's, let's, let's check ourselves as the Word instructs us. And spiritually, spiritually let's get to our checkups uh, and let's get our checkups so that sin doesn't wreck us. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to say. Get the checkup so sin doesn't wreck us. Amen. Amen. And continue uh, uh, examining ourselves. And God willing, we'll come back next week 
uh, if he has us back with another part to uh, examine yourself. Amen? Amen. So now, to those of you who don't know the Lord, um, how? Where do you begin? Where do you begin to examine yourself when you uh, haven't examined who you pray to or you don't know the Lord? Or you're praying to somebody that you heard about or some higher power or you're praying to somebody your, your grandmother prayed to or your family prayed to or some religious idea. No, friends, you need to know the Lord. You need to pray to the one and only God that can help you, who is Jesus Christ. And you really can't expect your prayers to be heard unless uh, you give yourself to the Lord. Why don't you ask him into your life today? I don't know what else the Lord has to show us to uh, prove that we are in the last days. I keep saying all you have to do is watch the news, if you have the stomach for it, okay? Uh, and you need God. <laughs> Whoever thought that we need the Lord just to eat, just to even watch TV? <laughs> but that's the way it is now. We need the Lord just to even watch TV so you don't come away more depressed than you already are. Amen? Only he can do it. It's only through Jesus Christ and it's supernatural. Yeah, but, it, but the good thing is that you can have him in your life right now. All you have to do is submit to him. Repent of your sins. Ask him into your life with a, a, a surety and with sincerity and believe. And you'll be a child of God and he'll take it from there. Pray this prayer with me now. Say, Lord, I repent my sins to you right now. I've been a sinner, Lord, and I'm a sinner now. But I believe that you are God. You died for mankind and God raised you from the dead. You laid it down, Lord, so that we may rise up. Would you come into my life, be my savior, and I'll follow you as best I can with your help all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, congratulations. You're a child of God. Get yourself a Bible, start reading it, Holy Spirit will come into you. He will show you what to do. He's going to guide you. He's going to take away those old bad habits of yours. He's going to change you around. There may be some growing pain to go through. My grandson is going through it now. He's very tall. He's going to be about 6'6". Six, six. So he's going through it right now. He's having pains in his knees and feet. and He's growing like a weed. His feet are probably almost as long as his shin bone. So I saw my son go through the same thing. There's going to be some growing pains when you go, when you come to the Lord. But don't worry. He's going to take care of it all. And he'll get you to where you need to be. So with that, we're going to, uh, I'm going to pray a deliverance prayer. And uh, then we will adjourn. I'll uh, pray a prayer over the church, our families, our people. It's called a deliverance prayer. We ask that the Lord deliver us from things in our lives that will hamper our relationship with him. We want a clear path to the Lord. I don't want it, I don't know about you, but I don't want anything in the way of me and the Lord. Okay? Yeah. And so I want him to remove things from us. So let's pray. Lord God, I ask you to remove these things from our lives, Lord. Remove these things from the midst of us that we may be closer to you. Would you take away blasphemy and obscenity? profanity and coarse talking, remove critical spirits, spirits of jealousy, coveting, envy, murmuring, gossiping, take away selfishness, greed, and gluttony, take away pride and rebellion, stubbornness, prejudice, and racism, remove hatred from us, unforgiveness, unrepentant hearts, remove spiritual blindness, Lord God. Would you remove um, fear, confusion, contentions, resentment, uh, depression and anxiety, would you take those things away from us, Lord? Uh, revenge and superstition, procrastination and complacency, would you help transgender children come to the accountability of Christ, of, of Christ Lord, before they uh, become genetically mutilated? Would you yes. remove apathy and lying, stealing, fraud, mental deceit, uh, uh, mental abuse, men, uh, sexual abuse, child and spousal and elder abuse? Remove domestic violence in all forms from your people and people in general, Lord. Would you remove murder from our hearts? Lord, so people don't uh, uh, care about one another uh, today, Lord. Would you remove those things from us? Murder and abortion, suicide, self-mutilation, selfish ambition, addictive spirits, spirits of mental illness, 
infirmities, physical impairments, let nothing stop us from coming to you. Discouragement, mocking God, take away superficial faith, conceit, fence straddling, compromising Christianity and casual Christianity. Remove it from us. Remove uh, fraternizing and satanic cults, divination, witchcraft, voodoo, um, seances and Ouija boards. Lord, would you take those things away from us? Psychics, fortune tellers, tarot cards, tea leaves, crystal balls, astrology, all these things rooted in the occult are an abomination to the Lord, and we're asking you, Lord, to remove it from us. Remove uh, homosexuality, bisexuality, adultery, and fornication. I call those the big four, Lord God, of immorality, incesting, cross-dressing, yes, pornography, which leads us to those things, Lord. Take those things away from us. Uh, immorality in all forms, gambling, doubt, division, hidden agendas, distraction, uh, unbelief, cyberbullying, uh, Lord God, rejection, animal cruelty, and desecrating the land that you've given us. Well, Lord, if there's anything else not on this board that are in our hearts that's hampering us or keeping us from you, we ask you humbly, Lord God, to remove these things from us that we might be closer to you. And finally, Lord, I'm asking you to bless everyone that turned out today, all of, our, all of the people on YouTube, all of the people on Facebook, those that will hear this, but Lord, especially those who came, those of our uh, uh, faithful followers, Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide, and family and friends, Lord. Would you bless us? Continue to keep us, Lord, exponentially. Give us what we need, Lord God. Give us good health. And, and, and Lord, if we become sick or saddled with an illness, bring us through it yes. even better than we were at first. Yes. Lord, you said we're fearfully and wonderfully made and we believe on you. So bless us, Lord God, to overcome those things and give us the finances we need to take care of our family, our homes, Lord God, our people, Lord, and continue to keep us at our eyes fixed on you. We thank you, Lord. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and bless you above and beyond as only he can do. And he will do it as if he's called you. Guess what? He'll do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We love you and honor you. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. You have a wonderful day in the Lord. Hope to see you all again. Thank you.